Huh? I know what you're thinking. Did he burn six tiles or only five? Well, I've kind of lost track myself in all this excitement. But being this is the Ortur Laser Master too, one of the most powerful diode lasers that I happen to have in my hand right now, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Oh, hey, <laughs> I guess you do feel lucky. <laughs> Sorry about that. Have a nice day. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. My name is Garrett, and today we are going to go over an exciting technique on how to tile your tiles. That's right, tile your tiles. If you haven't watched my video on prepping, painting, and burning the black tiles, there's the Hulk there. Make sure and check out my video below. I put it in the description. Also, if you're brave enough, you can take on the Norton white tile method. Yes, the Norton white tile method is a white tile spray painted with white paint and it is completely indelible to scratches, sanding, and it is just ready to go. Place your drink on that. Great way to make a few bucks here using the Norton white tile method. But again, today we are going to be going over the method for tiling your tiles. So let's go inside and I'm gonna show you how it's done. Okay guys, we're going to start with my favorite character, my favorite childhood character, which is Mr. Herman Munster. So I'm going to type in Herman, Herman Munster. And what I'm going to do is I've typed this in into Google, and I'm going to go over here to Images. One of the really cool things about Google Images, and what you'll want to do is you'll want to get the highest resolution image possible and this is going to be uh, true for any image that you're going to be looking for. The easiest way to do that is along the toolbar over here you want to select tools and that gives you this other little drop down bar here and under size you'll want to choose large and what that'll do is that will filter all of the results and give you the largest uh, highest resolution pictures uh, from whatever you search for. So this was the actual picture that I used for the Herman Munster uh, tiled image and we're gonna use that one. This is uh, looks like a piece of, of artwork and uh, again I do not own any of these pieces but um, I'm, uh, oh, I like to create fan art, and this would be considered fan art, especially something you're going to use personally. Uh, of course, I wouldn't sell anything like this, but it, this was something I'd use for my own personal use. So we're going to choose this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this image of Mr. Herman Munster and click Save Image As. And we're just going to call this Mr. Munster. Mr. Munster. Okay, so we've saved this image to our desktop, and now I'm going to go into a program that I use called GIMP, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. Now, when I use GIMP, I use a paid plugin, and it's called the Big Gimpin Plugin, and I, I use it, and uh, again, if you would like to use the Big Gimpin Plugin, it's kinda of hard to say, uh, you can you can go out and I'll leave links in the description below of this video of where you can purchase this plugin. So let's let's do it this way first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to open, and I am going to 
go out to my desktop and I'm gonna go down here and look for Mr. Munster and I'm gonna open that up in GIMP and you can see there is Mr. Munster and with using the big Gimbin plugin all I really do is go up to the big Gimbin plugin turn it on here some PowerShell script runs and as you can see I can select what I, whatever I'd like uh, tile wood I'm gonna leave it um, we're going to burn this on tile and this is going to be on um, again the tile painted green and then painted black I'm gonna leave this DPI at 600 and my max image width is 100 millimeters and it, it's gonna be a little bit less than this but I'll make those adjustments in light burn since my tile is uh, four inches by four inches ish the Lowe's tiles tend to be a little bit smaller than the Home Depot's which is kinda of strange so uh, depending on where you get your tile uh, you you may have to make some adjustments here but I'm gonna leave this uh, 100 by 100 so I basically click that it runs through the process and now you have an image that can be burned in light burn on a single tile so if you wanted to paint a single tile a uh, real cool color uh, you know shade of green and then paint over black and then throw this into light burn and this would be an awesome image and uh, you wouldn't have any issues with this whatsoever but since we are talking about tiling our tiles we have to take this image and we're going to tile it and this is going to work with any image you want the really cool thing about the program that I'm going to show you is that you can make this image as large as you want and with any size of tiles uh, it's pretty cool so first of all we need to save this image out I need to go over here to file and I need to go down to export as now if you don't have the JPEG extension in GIMP you may need to go in here and select your file type and uh, since I already have JPEG selected you can um, you can just ignore this but if JPEG is not selected let's say this is PNG or a, a, a GIF you may need to change this and that's it's pretty easy just by clicking this and this will change your extension to JPEG so I'm gonna call this Mr. Munster tile and I'm gonna save that to the desktop as well so I'm going to export this image I get a pop-up box and typically the quality is a lot less it's probably around 80 percent I always like to juke this up to around 100 percent so I do not lose any resolution so after I bump the quality up to 100 percent I click export and it goes through the motions and now this image is now saved to my desktop so the next place I want to go and now I know this is a strange sounding name it's rasturbator.net and this is the tool I was going to tell you about. Now, initially, this was created to create giant posters for uh, walls. And what you would do is you would run this, and you would use just regular typing paper and run them through your copier, and you could make these giant, you can see the thumbnails here, you can make these giant images of just about whatever you want, whether you have a color copier or a black and white copier. Uh, you can make all these really cool images well I thought you know you could do this with the laser tiles so how you would do this is you go over here to create your poster I'm gonna click this and now I'm going to either either you can either drag your image file here I'm just gonna go out and click choose file and I'm gonna go down here and there's my Mr. Munster tile I'm gonna open that up and now I just click the upload button and as you can see Mr. Munster is uploading it doesn't take long this is all web based and it is now uploaded there we go there we have it now as you can see the the default settings are this A4 paper which is your basic eight and a half by eleven um, size typing paper as you can see if you were to print this out you would have this huge poster but we really don't want eight and a half by eleven so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click drop down I'm gonna go down to custom define size and I'm going to change this to 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters okay Oop, that's by 10 we're gonna go 
100. There we go. Now, as you can see, I do not want, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, as you can see here, there's four tiles, and that's because this output size is four tiles wide. But we're going to change that to two to match our Mr. Munster here. So we're going to change that to two. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four tiles for this uh, Mr. Munster uh, image on this particular tile. Now, I normally deselect this. This is an add margin of 10 millimeters for each side. What that does is that gives you white space in between the tiles. This is really helpful if, again, if you're going to be printing this on a poster size with using eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper because 10 millimeters is, that's quite a bit of space and I don't want a whole lot of white space and it, I, I just actually just deselect that and it turns out fine. So the next thing I do is click continue. Uh, there's different types of styles that you can select. I do not select any of these styles here. Again, that's only if you're going to do something like on a gigantic wall somewhere. I mean, you might like some of these weird styles here. I don't particularly like them. So if you want them, if you want the image to look just like it did when you converted it, just select this no effects style. As you can see, it's exactly the same. I click continue. Uh, since we're not dealing with any of the presets, there's no reason to click any of these here because it really doesn't matter. You can leave all this alone. It's not going to do anything because there's nothing to do when enlarging without any effects. So all you got to do is ignore this stuff, click continue, and then now you're in a position to where uh, you can either uh, leave this alone. This is the default setting, which is enlarge, plain enlargement. I mean, there's some other options in here, whether you want a half tone or, I, again, just leave it, leave the, the default settings. The crop marks I take out, and what the crop marks are is, if, if any of you are familiar with uh, Adobe Illustrator, there are these little tick marks that are put on the images. So when you put them together, when you, when you cut them out, I guess you'd say, with um, they, they line up. So let's say you printed this on typing paper, it's so all the images will line up properly. But so I'm not going to use the crop marks and I am just going to click the button, complete four page poster. It is going through the process here. And as you can see down below, it has created a PDF. And the PDF, it is just self-titled Rasturbation here. This is the, I've done this quite a few times here. So this is, um, this is the eighth one I've done. And uh, that's all there is to it, to turn your, uh, your image into a tiled tile so the next thing we're going to do is you know how do you what do you do with this and it's pretty easy i'm just going to go over here into lightburn i'm going to open lightburn if i go out here to my downloads file and i open here's the pdf and here's all the four images which are 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and those are the tiles that you would burn it's like how in the heck am i going to get these images into lightburn well lightburn has a really cool function here and i just discovered this the other day is all you really have to do is go up to file and click on the import selection and here if you're in windows it's i'm just going to select this PDF here, which was the Rasturbation number eight. I click open, and then I get this little pop-up. It says, the file you're trying to load is a multi-page document. Which page would you like to load? Well, I'm gonna load the first one. So boom, there is the image. Now, as you can see, there's some of this, I kinda call it, I guess you'd call it garbage that's just kind of around it. There's a couple of ways you can get rid of this. Uh, over here on your cut layers section, I mean, you can you can actually turn all that off. What I do is I just select the layer and click the trash can, and it gets rid of that. So all I have left is this. Uh, actually, it's 99.998 uh, size image. And again, all I do is I have this on here. I'm gonna go back through and I'm going to import 
each and every one of these. Of course, here we go. And then get rid of the lines. And now we have four images here. Now, I have not tried to burn it. I've had some questions from uh, some of my subscribers of the channel saying, hey, why can't you just put all four tiles down on the uh, on the board and just laser them all at once. You know, I have not tried that, and that may be something I'll I would try in the future. But uh, again, what I do is I do these uh, all you know one at a time. So how you separate these guys one at a time? Because if you see here, it, there, it looks like there's just one image. So I want to separate these. And if you look down in Lightburn, you'll see all of these colored boxes down here. In fact, it's a uh, double zero through 29 uh, which what, what these correspond to are uh, layers that you can uh, create so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first square here I'm going to I'm going to click this uh, zero one and as you can see it created a new layer I'm going to click this second square and click this you can see it created another layer and so on and so forth. I'm going to go through and I'm going to create all these layers. So now I have one, two, three, four layers. And as you can see, you can actually turn these things off. So when you turn off the layer in the under the show column, you're basically making it disappear. If I were to start this laser up, it would burn this image that's hidden. So if you do not want to burn the image, you, you unselect the output section. So you can see how it kind of fades out. When this item is faded out, it will not, uh, it will not be burnt into your substrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to turn off all of these except the very first one. And this one, I mean, I can leave them here, you know, or I can move them around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first image I'm gonna lay it on my board and I'm going to line the laser up is I'll go through and I will burn this and again your mileage is going to vary with this as you can see these are set up to the, the default is 6,000 I'm going to set this to 1200 and my max power I'm gonna leave that at 20% now here's a real important tip that you're going to have to do since we made our changes in with the big gimpin plug-in and we have converted that image to where it can be burned with a laser uh, it has already been converted so what that means is is that you need to select this switch here that says pass through and what pass through means is that the image will be printed exactly like it was when you changed it in gimp so Lightburn is not going to be making any of the any changes in with any changes with uh, with the image mode or anything like that. So you need to make sure that pass through is selected. What I like to do first though is before I select this is I'll select my line interval, depending you know on your laser whether you're using the seven watt laser or the, or the fifteen or the twenty watt, you'll need to select your line interval and your. Uh, you'll need to select your, your line interval and it is that your DPI will correspond with that so you know again I, I set mine around uh, 0.110 uh, or 0 0.090 is, is a good number for me and then turn on pass through and you'll see all these options are grayed out and then click OK you'll need to make sure that you do that for every single layer because uh, trust me I've done this before and it's it's not it's not cool to for this thing to kick off at six thousand millimeters per minute. So uh, again, if this output button is green is selected, that is the item that is going to be burned. And again, when you get done, all you need to do is turn that off, go to the second one, click output, and turn it on. I mean, you can lay it right on top of that one, and then you would burn this one and so on and so forth you'll just turn these on turn them off and again you want to make sure that you've changed these change these numbers around and make sure that your your line intervals are set correctly pass through is turned on and that is really all there is to it to burn those particular tiles one at a time now as a bonus I am going to show you a program 
it converts images that will allow you to burn them with the laser. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out to a program called ImageR, A-I-M-A-G-R.com. Now I'm going to select this button here, which is an upload button. I'm gonna go down and I'm going to grab Mr. Munster again here, and it takes just a little while to, there it is right there, there is Mr. Munster in all his glory in black and white. And uh, this is a crop button, so if you want to crop the image, we're not gonna crop it, because it's actually nice and square. I'm gonna go and resize this image. Currently it's 1920 by 1920 pixels wide. I'm gonna change this to uh, millimeters, and I'm gonna go 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters at 100%, and I'm gonna change this to 600 DPI and click OK. And as you can see, I have got my image here. Looks real similar. Uh, so now I go over here. Since I've resized it, I'm going to choose my material that I'm going to be burning on. So I'm going to be burning on white tile, which it's going to be white tile that I've spray painted green and then painted over black. I'm going to select that option and click OK. And as you can see, the image has been inverted and it's ready to go. And all I really need to do is click the floppy disk icon, the save icon, and click download JPEG. And as you can see here, JPEG has been downloaded and is right there. And again, what you would do is you would take this over into the Rasterbator program again go to create your poster choose your file scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna find the one actually that was in the download section so that's the reason why I don't see it so there it is there is a 2613 and I'm gonna upload that file again the image R software is a free software that you can use. It's Again, it's browser-based. You do not need GIMP. You don't need any plugins. Uh, all you really need to do is um, head on out there, upload your image, and then again, you do the same thing. So I'm gonna change this to custom 100 by 100. I'm gonna take the margins out. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna move this to two sheets wide. So now I've got one, two, three, four, continue, no effects no effects continue continue take the crop marks out complete the poster go through the same steps that I showed you how to do uh, when we used GIMP and again you'll pull those back into light burn and then all you'll really all you'll really need to do is burn those tiles like we talked about and you're in business again this was a four tile uh, a four tiled tile Here's one of the nice things about this is that l let's say that you get some get some images of your family or maybe if you're doing this as a business you could take pictures of people and pets and you can not only just place them on a single tile if you're going to make a po uh, a coaster out of them you could do multiple tiles you know you could do tiles of six or nine wide or you can do tiles that are elongated do all kinds of stuff. And here, let me just show you some examples of some of the stuff that, uh, that I recently did. Come check this out.
Hey guys, thanks again for joining us here on 3D Print Farm for our Tiling the Tiles episode. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. And hey, if you don't know how to burn a tile, check the links in the description below. I have detailed descriptions on how to burn individual tiles so you can create a tiled tile. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you again next time on 3D Print Farm. Bye now. Get ask yourself one question. Get ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Do you? You get ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? I guess the dogs feel lucky. Why am I talking like this? Get ask yourself one question.